So here's something pretty interesting. Um, oops, sorry, I hit the camera there. So what we have here is this is the clutch that was on that gator, which the gator's now gone. Um, at least I just have this clutch left because I want to sell this clutch. Um, and what happens, or what is how it's set up, is this clutch, this plate right here actually mounts to the flywheel of the engine, and then this is the clutch itself. And this this plate right here is actually pressed onto the clutch of the gator. Now, how you get it off is Deere actually has a, a very specific puller that goes down in this uh, hole right here, which normally, and I think I have now lost it, um, there's a bolt, this bolt sits down here and basically holds the clutch to this plate right here make sure you can see all this so obviously you take this bolt out and now you have uh, the clutch here now the reason I have this plate off and it's no longer on the engine is because these bolts were actually loose because this is a replacement clutch it was probably placed sometime in 20 Based on these date codes, probably 2010 would be my guess. Uh, this was a 1983 Gator, something along those lines. So this is a newer clutch. Um, so that's why I have it off, is these bolts were actually loose in here. So it was super easy to get off, not a big deal. Well, Deer sells a specific puller. Well, that puller is like, um, I want to say that puller is like 40 bucks. And obviously, I don't want to spend $40 just to sell one part because uh, I don't intend to get in the gator business. I'm just trying to get out of a, a gator that I got into that wasn't economical to fix because uh, it had other problems. So, But it has a good clutch on it, so I'd like to sell it. Well, you can do... So what happens is if you see these, there's these threads here, and there's a lot of, thre there's a lot of uh, posts on different forums across the internet. Um, that right there is 9 sixteenths, 18 threads per inch. Now that's not the same across all gators. This is for the older six by four units. And so what I did is I went to the store this morning and got a uh, 9 sixteenths, 18 thread per inch bolt, which threads down in there like so. And then I got a half inch, uh, just regular bolt. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off the ends and it'll, it'll go down in there. I gotta figure out my length, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off the uh, thread, threaded end right here. So I'm gonna cut that off, and I'm gonna come back in here and figure out how long I wanna make it. And I was smart, I did buy two. These are grade eight, so if I mess up on this one, I've got this one. Um, these were just bulk hardware, so I've got like you know less than five bucks in those. These were not bulk hardware. Uh, I want to say these were like $2.89. Now, what's really cool, or hopefully in the near future, because I got my closing lathe that I'm still working on, I didn't feel comfortable enough uh, doing any threading work on it yet, but hopefully in the future, I can buy longer 9 16 or 5 8 and um, I'll probably have to buy a 5 8 and basically rip the threads. I'll have to look at diameters of everything and I rip the threads off and re-thread it to meet and then basically uh, turn down the end so I can make my own single puller. And so let me, uh, let me cut the end off and then of this bolt right here and then we'll come back and we'll uh, see how much we need to take off. Kind of talk about that some. All right, so got my bolt cut off here. Got a nice flat surface on the end. We don't want to be pushing it sideways once we put it in there. And about as flat as I can get without major work. Uh, so now we need to determine how long we need to make it. Now, obviously, we want to keep it as long as possible, but at the same time, we want to give some threads uh, for the bolt here to catch. So right now we've got, and I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. I mean, you see, so we basically have a finger's width left on the top. I know these are technical terms, right? So we basically have a finger's width left on the top, so we probably want to do another finger's width. So we're going to probably want to cut it off somewhere down in here, because if we do that, then we'll have, you know, probably, I don't know, half inch of threads um, down. And I think that based on 
basically the length of the threads is if you spin this all the way in there um, I've already tested this one of the things you don't want to do is you don't want to bottom this bolt out um, in other words you don't want to go up in the smooth part of the shank because if you do that you'll be in all kinds of trouble and so the bolt bottoms out right in here somewhere right there um, so I'm not in worry of, of bottoming it out but um, so you don't want to cut it too short but let's take this out and so basically we've got we're gonna get our um, since I know somebody's gonna say well you should have gotten some gotten some measurements so let's think about it this way this we have approximately 0.66 inches give or take I don't know a tenth or a hundredth um, so we got 0.66 inches from the top to there so a half inch and then let's, we're going to go a half inch below that so we're going to say 1.2 inches Sorry, I'm doing this off camera. Let me find somewhere to, something to mark it with. <clears throat> so we're going to cut off 1.2 inches overall. So we're going to cut it right there. And that'll be our... Our stub shaft that'll go down in there um, into the because that'll give us about six tenths of clearance or six tenths of depth once we go in there I think that should be fine and then we that I mean that'll basically put us oops I turn it on so it'll give us approximately that much thread so we're using a little less than half, probably a third of our thread, which makes me happy. So I'm going to go cut this off and we'll come back and we'll see if we can pop that off. All right. See if this works. That's down in there. Got that down in there. And then we're going to see if we can get away with the 3 8 drive. problem is, is I have no earthly idea how to hold this clutch. I don't think we can get away with the 3 8 drive. We will have to upsize it. And it's a matter of holding the clutch still. I don't know how to do that part. Because I have it off the machine, so obviously that's going to present some challenges. Um, they also said you can use an impact gun, which I think I'm going to do. Because you know what? If I break this, it's not like it's the end of the world. It's a free part to me. Now an impact is not my ideal tool in this particular case because I don't feel like I can control it as well. So I'm just going to use the DeWalt DCF 899 and uh, go at the lowest setting until it doesn't move anymore and then we'll bump it up. Well there we go. That was easy. It was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. There's our shaft. There's our part that we made. And then, hopefully, if everything went right, we haven't screwed up these threads. And we have not. So perfect. I'm excited. So now we can take our shaft or our stub shaft there. 
we can take our bolt out. And there's how you would take the clutch out of a gator. Um, less than less than 20 minutes and well trip to the store. Less than 20 minutes and 10 bucks. And those two parts right there work like a champ. So have to put those in a bag and label them. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please leave them below. Happy to answer them. Hopefully in the near future, if, or in the future, if I ever have to do this again, I will, uh, I will know more about my lathe, and I will feel comfortable saying that I could take the lathe and basically just make a single long shaft with the correct threads on it. So anyway, thanks for watching. Appreciate your support.